Good morning. Welcome to another move session, another week of January, <laughs> the never ending month. I feel like the month should be almost over and it's, well, I guess we're on the second half at least finally. <laughs> the first half. I don't think I've ever felt, Jan my mom, every single year my mom says, oh, January's the longest month. It's, it's so long feels just like forever and I'm like no it doesn't we have New Year's I have my birthday and it's still early winter like I feel like December we don't really get to to you know I, but I'm with her this year man anyway it's really beautiful out I'm just not still not sure how I'm gonna get out of my house today <laughs> hey Betty how are you good morning good morning okay let's get started <laughs> So starting off with some nice gentle twists. Anybody sore from shoveling yesterday? We got so much snow. Like I don't, I don't think it's been, I don't know how many years it's been since we've had snow like this. It's, it's just insane. My <coughs> boys shovel snow, that's they have a little side business. They've done that for years. They were so excited yesterday for all the work that they were gonna get. <coughs> And I think it took them, there was three of them, and it took them three or four times longer than it usually does to shovel um, their first client, which is just down the street. It was insane. And my driveway is kind of like partially, like not fully <laughs> cleared up, so we still have to do it today. None of us have moved our vehicles yet. <laughs> and I feel like I, I feel compelled to get my snowshoes out today and I just don't want to drive anywhere, but I also don't want a snowshoe here because people stare at me and I don't know, it's not, not as fun. But anyways, as we get started, I always like to remind us to kind of a gentle, non-judgmental, non-critical self-assessment of where are you at today, how are you feeling, how's your body feeling, are you stiff and sore? tired, achy, creaky from shoveling yesterday. Um, I'm sore from my treadmill workout actually. Or not sore, but ooh, I can feel it. <clears throat> so just kind of take an assessment. How, where are you at today? Do you need to pull back a little bit? Do you feel amazing as you get started and get moving? Is today a day you dial it up? A day you dial it down? A day you just kind of go with it? Where are you at? Remember, it's not about, like, whether you dial it up or dial it down is really irrelevant. What's the only relevance is that you're here and you're doing it, you're showing up, <coughs> you're moving your body, and you're choosing to, well, show up for yourself, right? Like, so often when we're not feeling it, or we're stiff, or we're sore, or, I'm, I'm reading this really good book right now, it's actually quite... I'm finding it quite entertaining and, and funny, um, but it's a book, it's a David Goggins book, but it's written by Jesse Itzler. Jesse Itzler has David Goggins come live with him for 31 days to shake up his life a little bit. So if you don't know who David Goggins is, he's known as kind of the world's toughest man, world's hardest man. Uh, he's insane. He, he's insane. That's all I can say. Like he's, he's next level. He's you know, otherworldly, <laughs> different planetarium, like, <clears throat> not me, I mean, just, and not even necessarily something that I want to strive to be, but you can't help, I can't help but be fascinated by him and his thought processes and his view on uncomfortable versus uncomfortable, and I think a lot of people just are like, if I could just have a little a little bit of David Goggins in me, man, what could I do? And so that's how Jesse Isler felt, so he asked him to come live with him for 30 days so he could see what's this guy all about and how can I be a little more like him. Anyway, the book is very entertaining. Jesse, I don't think, quite knew what he was signing up for when uh, he did that. So you're noticing perhaps that I'm increasing the intensity now and adding a hawk. You don't have to. You can keep it at low intensity, you can keep it at the marches. I want to offer options as you get better, as you get fitter, as you become more capable, you can add the hops when you're ready, but don't feel 
like they're mandatory. Someone said to me a couple weeks ago, um, she said, oh, I, I wish I could do your workouts. I, they're just too hard. I can't do them. And it kind of like, no, I don't want them to be too hard for anybody. I want them to be, you know, hard enough for those of you who are, want hard, but I want them to be doable for anyone. I try really hard to offer um, modifications because the goal isn't necessarily for you to do my workout. The goal is for you to show up and move with me. <laughs> Hence the name. So my ankle's a little stiff today. Feeling it. Anyway, so what I wanted to share with you about this book is that what I'm really loving is that we have a, we put a lot of limitations on ourselves that are strictly mental, right? So, for example, I'm going to use Heather as an example here. When I first met Heather, I was training her to run, to train for something. I don't remember what it was at the time. Heather, do you? Anyway, she was training for a run. She said, what should I do today for my run? It's raining. And I said, I don't understand what you mean. Well, it's raining, so where, how am I supposed to do my run? And I said, you go outside and do your run. <laughs> you get what? But in her mind, like, you don't run outside when it rains. <clears throat> so that's just an example, right? Like, you might say, oh, there's a lot of snow out. I can't do my run. What should I do instead? Goggins would say, well, why can't you do your run? <laughs> what do you mean you can't do your run? You know, oh, it's... And we do this, we, if, you're, if you are aware, we do this all day long, like in all aspects of our lives. Not all of us, but I'm guilty of it. And it's because we get stuck in routine, number one, right? And we have preconceived beliefs or perceptions of what we can do or what we're supposed to do, right? Okay, so we're adding going into full intensity now, high intensity. So the goal of this third round, if you're ready, is to go as hard as you can. Push, lift those knees, get that heart rate up. If you're not there yet, remember, what is hard for you, <coughs> Iron Cowboy talks about this, my heart is different than Kathy's heart, different than Heather's heart, different than Betty's heart. We all have our own heart. It doesn't make any of us better, right? We're just different. But Goggins is a pro at removing those mental limitations. Because instead of saying, you know, looking for the can't, which is what we do, and it's natural because we're always looking to protect ourselves, right? Our mind wants to move us to comfort all the time. Our mind loves familiarity, right, which is comfortable. Our mind is designed to protect us and is going to always choose the comfortable, <coughs> safer, easier route. The problem with that is that doesn't ever allow us to grow. It doesn't allow us to expand our comfort zone, right? Expand our abilities because we stay stuck. You notice I'm not hopping this. My foot is feeling a little off today. I'm not sure why. There we go. It's, it's tweaky. See, so there you go. So I naturally will intuitively protect my foot when I feel discomfort, right? <clears throat> so we're designed that way. So that's not to say, like, Goggins is like, the more uncomfortable something is, that's what he does it. So yesterday, Goggins, I was thinking if he lived with me, we would have been out taking advantage of uncomfortable circumstances, meaning the snow. 
right, running in the snow. Uh, I have a treadmill, I opted for the treadmill instead. Not that it was easy, but I'm not ready to go full Goggins by any stretch. But I'm intrigued by little doses, little <coughs> Goggins doses in my life, right? If weather is bad, go out, right? If whew, if something's hard, try it. Fail at it. That's okay. Hey, hey, Dawn. Yes, good snowy morning indeed. Has anybody been out? Have you guys left your houses <coughs> since it all started? <coughs> We're going to start with core today, you guys. Ladies. Oh, I always see you guys. Whew. It's actually warm in here. Okay, so on the note of Goggins, we're going to start. Okay, we're going to start with 10 push ups, okay? 10 push ups. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. <coughs> Goggins really likes push ups. <laughs> push ups, sit ups, flutter kicks. That's what we're going to do next. But we're going to do seals. Goggins is a Navy seal. We're going to do seals. I had to Google what they look like. Flutter kicks. Okay, so we're going to do. We're going to do 20. So hang with me here, okay? Ready? So here's what they look like. Okay? One, two, Three, that's one. One, two, three, that's two. That's three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, six. One, two, three, seven. One, two, three, eight. One, two, three, nine. One, two, three, ten. Ten more. One, one, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, Three, four, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, six, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Feeling that? Feel it in your quads, maybe? We want to pull in the core so we're not just feeling it in the quads. <coughs> Here, we're going to do ten roll ups. Here's the thing that I would say, right? Maybe you can't do full push-ups. Maybe you didn't do as many reps as I just did. Maybe you went slower. So roll-ups. One, two, three, four. Maybe you're doing half roll-ups. Five that look like this. Ourselves. 
So people who say they can't do my workouts, what they're really saying is I can't do them exactly like you, right? So that's a limitation we put on ourselves. Take that limitation off. Because the only way you progress, if you only do things that you can do in their entirety, then you're not growing, are you? Ready? One, two, three, four. I would also argue five. What you think you can do and what you can actually do are vastly different. Eight, nine, ten. Ten more. Ten. Nine, and that's what Jesse Isser finds out in his book. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, <coughs> one. He finds out that the limitations of what he can do <coughs> are in his head because he is actually capable of doing a lot more than what he thinks, right? You might think, oh, I can run 10K. I bet you can run 20. It's pleasant now, right? But so can you do 10 push-ups? Um, no, you might only be able to do five, but I bet you can do one more. I bet you can do two more than you think you can, right? Remember that pushing, that boundary? <coughs> On that note, 10 more push-ups. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Whew, that's our 100 core. Okay, so we're going to go into legs now. How's everybody doing? How many push-ups do you guys think you can do? How many push-ups do you usually do? I feel like for me in my head, I have, in my head, I can do 10 or I could do 20. And I stop because that's how many I know I can do. You can always do more than you think you can. All right, we're gonna do 45 seconds. We're starting with step ups today, guys. So we're gonna do alternating step ups. <coughs> and I'm gonna use weights. by this book, but seriously inspired because, all right, you guys ready? Here we go. So alternating legs today. So we're doing both legs in this 50 seconds. We're not going to separate our legs today. <laughs> So we're doing both sides here, okay? So 
lunge, side lunge. And so I had this thought yesterday, even snowshoeing, right? I haven't, I haven't been on snowshoes in a few years, a couple years anyway. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be so hard. It's so hard. Snowshoe running. And I'm resisting it. Why? Because I'm not in shape to do it. So like how many times a day, or not a day, but how often do we think, oh, I could do that, but I can't do it. All right, we're going to go into <coughs> wall sit. All right, here we go. I'm going to do this side. All right. 90 degrees, oh Lord, what was I thinking? This just was an intuitive hit, but what was I thinking? Okay, holding it, holding it, belly's in. You think, I can't do that in its entirety, right? That is the, really the concept. I can't do that in its entirety. I'm not even gonna, oh my God. I'm not even gonna bother trying, right? How often do we, do we short ourselves I can't do that in its entirety now, so I'm not, I'm going to find something else to do instead, right? This is what I was thinking yesterday. Okay, five seconds, dying, two, one, okay, Woo! Guys, I hate those. <coughs> really, truly, really, truly hate those. <coughs> It's just I catch myself, right, in, these, in this line of thinking, like, oh, <coughs> I can't do that, so I'll just do something else. And it's like, well, if I actually just start chipping away at it, I'm going to get there. But that sort of, like, thinking doesn't really enter my mind unless I am intentional about it. Does that make sense? So it's like, I think, oh, if I can't do... If I can't do any pull-ups, pull-ups and other things, so I came in here and did it, I could do two. <laughs> well, I can't do more than two, what's the point? Well, if I do two, and I do two the next day, or what if I do two and then I do two a couple hours later, right? And so that's one of the things Goggins has him do, is he has, he has him do the very first day he moves in, he has him do a uh, hundred pull-ups. And Jesse did, so he can't do pull-ups either. But he has them do them literally one at a time. So it's just sometimes I feel like we short ourselves in life because we think, well, I can't do that. I can't do Dawson's classes. So I'll we'll find something else. Well, what if you start doing Dawson's classes? And in three months, you can do Dawson's classes, right? Like, Jocelyn couldn't do Jocelyn's classes in the beginning either. I had to modify everything that I used to do. But we don't get anywhere. We don't start and be willing to, to suck, really, right? So I guess that's one of the things It's hard. We fight it every time. We get used to being bad at one thing, and we're like, well, what? Well, that's good. I don't want to be bad at everything. So I don't want to live too risky in other areas in my life, right? <clears throat> I find it's happening a lot with my business right now. People look at, hey, I'd love to maybe do what you do, but, you know, you're you're so good at speaking online, or you're so good at this, or so, yeah, I've been doing it for four years, consistently, right, like, oh, I wish I could run like you, oh, I can't even run at the end of my street, well, I've been working at it, right, like, I had to start not being able to run to the end of my street, whew, what was next, you guys? We got it blinking. I know we did well set. What was next? Oh my gosh, why am I? I'm losing my mind. 
What did we miss? I'm like literally completely blanking. Push-ups are the worst. I know, but when you can actually do, okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna do split lunges. This is how I'm getting out of doing wall sit for the last one. Okay, so we're doing split lunges. I know I missed something. Betty's gonna tell me what it is. I don't remember. I literally have never blanked like this. This is my next least favorite. So try to make sure your torso is upright. Okay? So my torso is upright. I'm not leaning forward. Okay? So chest is up, sitting your weight back on your heel. <coughs> I really hate these, but now we don't have to do. I'll let Betty remind you whatever we missed on that last one. For some of the legs. Three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna do the other side now. Um, we avoid doing things right now. We're not good at, right? But yet those are the things, those are the, my old coach, Bob Heilig, used to say, the things that you want to do the least are your biggest opportunities for, for growth. How do we say, like, whatever you're resisting the most is your biggest opportunity for change, the change that you want, right? We avoid, like, think about diets. <laughs> We're, like, willing to do all these crazy diets. I was talking to a client yesterday. Um, He's like, you know, I don't understand. Do I eat fruit or do I not eat fruit? My friends tell me not to eat fruit. It's bad for me because of the sugar, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, whoo. My perspective is you need to eat for wellness first. You need to figure out how to eat, to nourish, look at food, treat food like a tool, not punishment. Ah, suitcase squats. Thank you, ladies. Okay, we'll do these on our last set. I just skipped right over them. When it comes to diet, we want to do all these crazy things because we want to avoid just doing the basic simple thing, which is eat, eat fruits and vegetables with some protein and some fats. Right? Like, but I don't know if it's we think, oh, that's too simple, that's too, that can't get me results or if it's like not interesting enough, boring. But if we just eat real foods, like how about we just, my, my, my recommendation, like if you want to start a diet, you want to change the way you eat, try to eat only whole foods. Try to only eat single ingredient foods. If you can do that, everything else is gonna fall into place, right? But we're in a hurry, I guess. We want our results quickly, so it's like if we can take, okay, last set, if we can take massive action, right, if we can grossly, you know, upheave our life, we'll get those results faster, right? And then we can go back to living the way we did. It doesn't work that way, guys. Like, I cut up one for 90 days. I got the results I wanted. It went back to the way I was. And I got back my old results, <laughs> right? Like, why? Well, because we have to change who we are to change who we are. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm in the process of reconfiguring <clears throat> my mind. I talked about this on my coaching call last week with my clients, your self-image. Who do you see yourself as? If you're making changes to get the results, <clears throat> yeah, it starts there. But once you get the results, you're going to go back to, you're, you're going to stop that thing. So I really believe, like I actually love, like David Goggins is an extremist, yet his philosophies are really built on daily habits, like what he does daily. 
you know, he works out like an animal. So we don't all have to work out like an animal, but you know, reading his book, I kept finding myself <laughs> wanting to get off the couch and do 10 push-ups. <laughs> because that's what he does. He just movement is part of his life, right? Movement is just what he does. So he just doesn't just work out because, oh, it started that way, right? Like his his motivation started out because he wanted to become a new seal. He had to lose over 100 pounds to even to even be considered. So he lost it in something crazy like two or three months because, yes, he changed. <laughs> He's an extreme guy. But then, you know, he didn't get, gain it back because he wanted to become a Navy SEAL. So it was just step one. So I guess if you want to take that in my line of thinking, like, you want to become a Navy SEAL, what is a Navy SEAL? Well, they're the toughest, fittest, mentally strongest, um, humans on the planet, most resilient. And so he had to become that in every way. He had to just lose 100 pounds and become a Navy, Navy SEAL, right? But he had, to, he had to work on everything. And now in his mind, that's who he is. Oh, now I'm gonna do well set, you guys. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait to do well set, you guys. Okay. Okay. Is this as hard for you as it is for me? I hate well set. 90 degree angle, shoulders are back, chest is out, belly is in, support the hips with your core. Picture someone coming up to you about to punch you. Okay, we're not even halfway. <laughs> Oh God, okay, breathing through it, let's pray through it, count. Hang on, 10 seconds. Five seconds. now. <coughs> okay, we're going into a different round. Whew. Okay, we're going to do our 747s today. I feel like I didn't really do them last. Oh, yes, I guess we did do them. <coughs> sideways on the stuff. <coughs> okay, ready? So going up, keeping that leg up. Okay, so I want you to think driving up through the middle of the foot, so your arch. Your arch is actually designed like a suspension bridge designed to absorb impact. Often I find from training clients for so many years, you will be inclined one way or the other, forefoot or heel. So pay attention if you tend to drive up more with your toes, like your front of your foot or your heels and focus on the opposite because what you focus on You're going to naturally push with the one. So by focusing on the other, <coughs> you're going to even it out. <laughs> Can I finish a sentence? <laughs> oh my gosh. I do this a lot now. I'm becoming my, my, my mom and dad. <laughs> my dad will start a sentence and then I'm like, okay, end. <laughs> Were you going to finish or <laughs> was that it? So using that core, try to make sure you're 
like even, right? Your hips are, I always think of my hip bones. Think about them like headlights, headlamps. You want to keep them in line and pointed straight forward. <laughs> Whew. attention to, to how your knees are tracking on that leg, and try to visualize <coughs> your inner thigh pressing your outer thigh out. You're not going to really move your leg, but what you want is you don't want your knee coming in like, coming in like this as you bend. So what I focus on is engaging these muscles to drive it out. Does that make sense? At all? Okay, we have to do that again. <laughs> we're going to start on that side this time. So we're going to do two rounds of this set. That's it. <coughs> what we need to do probably is finish with those lunges that we only did one round of. So I hate them, so we should probably do more of them. Anyone, anyone else hate those split lunges? Hate those. Yeah. It means we need to do more of them, Dawn. All right. Here we go. Right? 
Goggins will call you on this one. In one of the first chapters, he takes him out for a run. And Jesse says, it's minus 14. <laughs> and Goggins says, no, man. Your head thinks it's minus 14. In my mind, it's sunny and balmy outside. And Jesse's like, no. <laughs> my computer says, it's minus 14. He said, no. Your computer's not running. How does your computer know? <laughs> Anyway, so that's kind of, it. I thought that was, that cracked me up. All right, starting with the leg you finished on last time. Um, what was my point? So she, oh, your beliefs are not true. I mean, the weather is probably true, although how we perceive the weather is not, is not true, right? So, yes, let's say it's, it's 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees outside. That is true. Is that hot or cold? That is subjective, right? Almost all of our beliefs are subjective. <clears throat> so what she's saying is what most of us do is we have beliefs that are not true, but they don't serve us. So we can shift our beliefs, create lies that serve us, we're going to be better off in life, right? If I lie to myself and say minus 10 is cold, it might, it might limit me from doing things. If I lie to myself and say it's, it's beautiful and enjoyable, it's going to move me into action. <clears throat> so the first step is understanding. She, she defines beliefs as the thought you think a lot. It's just the thoughts that you think most frequently. So you most frequently think uh, COVID is dangerous. I don't know. Whatever. Social media is bad. It's toxic. Well, is it toxic? No. You, you, but what we then do is confirmation bias. We look for everything around us that supports our thoughts and beliefs, and that's all we see. Right? So like, Kale is delicious. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily, but is it not? Well, it makes me feel really good. So in my mind, I think, oh, I quite enjoy kale, a kale salad because I feel so great after. Right? Whereas I could say to myself, tastes like dirt. Um, I'd rather eat poutine, but I choose to focus on instead of the yumminess of the poutine, how I feel awful after. Does that make sense? So it's like just about retraining our minds. Okay, so we're going to finish off today with three things to do, you guys. We have our split lunges. So we're going to do each side. Man, my legs are butchered. What are they? Are they really? I could go out and run 10 miles, right? So could you. Okay. So could you. Just telling ourselves, <laughs> I'm pooped, I'm done, but I bet we can do more. But we're not going to. <laughs> I am going to make a pact right now. I'm going out on my snowshoes today. I'm not sure if I'll last two minutes <laughs> or longer, but like I was saying in the beginning, it doesn't matter. I need to go try. I need to go out and see how it feels. So same with these you guys, these ones you guys. <clears throat> Make sure your knee is tracking. First of all, you don't want it sliding over your toes. I can be able to see my toes. And the other thing is you don't want it tracking in. You want to focus on it tracking out. Not out, straight. sitting back and you want that belly pulled in. The second side is always worse because the first side is burning from your first set. Okay, we've got 18 seconds. 13 seconds. No, I'm not counting. Three. 